start recording. Okay. Now, <clears throat> reverted joints. Now, this part we will be looking at this section. This chapter we'll be looking at reverted joints. Okay, what are reverted joints? Now, example here. These are rivets. These are called rivets. Okay, so this is the shaft. Okay, of the rivets. So usually when you refer to plates, mouse steel plates or whatever, so whatever type of plates, okay, you have. Okay, usually you need to drill a hole through and then you need to place the rivet here. Okay, you need to place the rivet shaft into the holes. Okay, so and then you use a device to compress the whole thing together, the whole assembly together. So it will form a joint or it will form a clamping force on both the plates. <clears throat> okay, so now here, these are called lap joints. These are called lap joints where you have two plates, okay, one plate on top of the other one, okay? So there are some terms that you need to know here, the technical terms that we need to use here for reverted joints. Now, the first one is the pitch. A pitch is the vertical distance from the center of one rivet to the center of the other rivet, okay? Then you have what we call back pitch, that is the horizontal distance from the center of one rivet to the center of the next rivet. Then you have diagonal pitch, which, the, which is the diagonal distance from the center of one rivet to the center of the next rivet. So we call this as lap joints, okay? And then this is called single reverted lap joint. Why? Because you can see there is only a column of rivets. But then when you look at it, even though it is three rivets here, but then the number of rivets is still considered as one for a single reverted lap joint with single column. Okay, so here you have double column. So the number of rivets will be considered as the uh, number of rivets that is shear will be considered as two, that is double, okay, two. So this is called a chain rivet, rivetting, and these are called zigzag rivetting, okay? So for zigzag rivetting, for this diagram, it is also double riveted. So usually we consider N, that is the number of rivets, either is under shear or crush to represent n equals to 2 here for this case, n equals to 2 also for this case, and n equals to 1 for this case. Okay? So, butt joint. So, when you refer to butt joint, a butt joint is that in which the main plates, the main plates, are kept in alignment butting. That means touching each other, and a cover plate or a strap plate is placed either on one side or both sides of the main plates, okay? The cover plate is then reverted together with the main plates, okay? So butt joint here, we have single strap butt joint and also a double strap butt joint, okay? So these are examples of butt joints, okay? So these are called the main plates that is shaded in blue, okay? These are considered as main plates. And the one shaded in pink color is called the cover plates or the strap plates. This you have double cover or double strap. Okay, this is also a chain reverting. Remember what is back pitch, what is pitch, what is diagonal pitch. Okay, this is an example of chain reverting. This is an example of zigzag reverting for butt joint. So remember, butt joint can be single cover or double cover. So this both examples here are double cover. So if it is single cover, that means you have a single plate on top or a single plate at the bottom only, either on top or bottom. So double cover, so we have top and bottom as at the same time. Okay. So in and zigzag. 
Now, the important terms that I have explained just now, first thing is you must know what is a pitch. Second thing is you must know what is a back pitch. Third, you must know what is diagonal pitch. And fourth, what is margin. So I have explained, okay, or I've already defined these four terms earlier. So failure of reverse. The first failure of reverse we are looking at will be based on the tearing of the plate. Will be based on the pairing of the plate. Okay, a joint may fail, a joint may fail due to tearing of the plates at an edge, okay, as shown in the figure below. This can be avoided by keeping the margin, okay, equals to 1.5D, that means roughly 1.5D, where the D is the diameter of the revert hole or the diameter of the revert. So to prevent the tearing of the plates, huh? okay? So this is what is going to happen. So basically this diagram here. So when forces applied like this, pulling force, pulling force. So what happened is, the plates, if this plate is of made of weaker material, what happens is when we apply forces like that, the plate will tear across like that. Okay, the plate is weaker. This time we consider the plate is weaker than the revert material. So when you apply this force here, the plate might tear across like this. So when you consider tear, okay, or the strength of the tearing force, okay, the strength or the resistance of tearing. You have to consider the area or the area should be taken 90 degree or perpendicular to the line of action of the force. Should be perpendicular to the line of action of the force. So when we consider the area, so, we have to look at this diagram here. We have to look at this diagram here, which is shaded, okay? So this area is an example of what you have here. So this area can be taken as, first thing is of course the thickness of the plate, okay? The thickness of the plate. The next thing is this length here. So how are you gonna measure this length here? This length usually is measured by taking the pH, minus the diameter of the rivets or the diameter of the hole. So you will get this length. So when you take this length, multiply by thickness, you, get, you will get the area which is resisting the force. So that is the formula for the area which is resisting tearing. So if let's say, for example, we are looking at tearing resistance or tearing strength, then you have to change this P here to be the subject, which this P here is the force or the load. So if force to be the subject, then you will have to take stress times area. If you take stress to be subject, it will be force over area. If you take strength of force to be subject, then it should be stress times area. So what you need to do is you just need to substitute this area here, which is resisting tearing force, into this formula. So that will give you the tearing strength. Okay, that is tearing strength. So the next one is the shearing of the rivets, the shearing failure. The plates which are connected by rivets exert tensile stress on the rivets. And if the rivets are unable, if let's say the rivets now is weaker compared to the plate, then the rivet will be sheared or will be cut into parts or split into parts. They are sheared, okay? So this example here gives you, okay, first diagram is lap joint, second diagram is butt joint. First diagram is single riveted, second diagram is double riveted. So when you apply force on the plates, what happens if, if the rivet is weaker than the plates, 
the rivets will span tends to be split into two parts like that. So when we measure the area, we have to measure the area based on this section here. That is pi d squared over 4. And remember for shearing, the area that you measure have to be parallel to the direction or the line of action of the force. So that is why the area that is taken is pi d squared over 4 or pi r squared here. Yeah. So for single riveted n is 1, for double riveted n is equals to 2. And the symbol of lowercase letter n is used for number of rivets. So this is an example how they are shared, the rivets are shared under single shear and double shear. So both of these cases is single shear. Unless if it refers to a butt joint with double cover or double strap, then it will be something like that. Okay, so we have double shear. So we have double shear. And if let's say, for example, you are referring to a single uh, lap joint or lap joint, then you will have something like this. We call single shear. And this is double shear. So how are you going to differentiate this in the formula that you have written? So the area for single shear, you need to times with what? The area when you're dealing with double shear, you have to times with two, theoretically, okay? Theoretically, you have to times with two, okay? The area for double shear, you have to times with two. The area for single shear times one. But usually we don't show the times one, okay? So the formula for area, D represents the diameter of the rivet or the hole. Tau here stands for the safe permissible shear stress for the rivet material. N is the number of rivets per pitch length. Per pitch length. So you all know by now what it means by pitch. So this is the area. First thing you have to know area, pi d squared over four, or you can use pi r squared, then times N. N stands for number of rivets. That is for single shear for this case here. For double shear, you need to multiply this whole thing here by two, okay, by two, okay? So that for double shear, remember N stands for number of rivets. This is two, this is one, okay? So if you are looking at this, single shear times one, number of rivets times two. If let's say you have two power, uh, power plate, then you have double shear times two, then number of rivets times two, okay? So now we want to measure the strength or the resistance towards shearing. Then remember, force have to change to be the subject. So force, if force is the subject, then you have stress times area. So the stress here is tau. So you have the stress multiplied by the area. That is for shearing. Now the next one is for crushing. So crushing, is you have to imagine that the rivets is weaker compared to the plate material. So if the rivets is being, okay, the forces acting on the rivets is from all direction, from all direction, then you say the rivet might fail under crush, C-R-U-S-H, crush, okay? So, D stands for the diameter of the rivet, T stands for the thickness of the plate, sigma subscript C stands for crushing stress, okay, N stands for number of rivets. Now, how are we going to look at rivet area of rivets that is resisting crushing? So we have to consider what we call a projected area. Projected area is, okay, the plane the center plane of the circular object. The center plane of the circular object. And then this section here for crushing, you have to consider this is the part which is in the plate, in the plate, not both sides of the plates in one single plate, okay? You need to consider only at in one plate itself, in one plate itself. So this part of the rivet is inside the hole. So when we consider projected area, remember we only measure the plane. So for circular cross-section, circular object, you measure the projected area by taking the center plane, 
that is the diameter multiplied by thickness. This will give you the area. So the crushing stress, the crushing resistance, sorry, the crushing resistance, the crushing strength, again, I have to say, okay, you have to change the P or the force to be the subject. Then once the P or the force is a subject, then you have stress times area. So the crushing area is dt times n. If let's say, for example, you have double reverted, triple reverted. If single reverted, you times only with one. If it is double reverted or triple reverted, then you multiply by two or three. It depends on how many columns of reverts you have. So this is the crushing stress, thickness of plate, the diameter of the revet. So this will give you the crushing strength. Now the next part and is also the last section for this part. The last section for this part. So all together there are two parts for this chapter. So for the first part, the last section here is to learn how to find the efficiency of the joint. Now to find the efficiency of the joint, earlier we have already found out PT, PS, and now PC. So out of this PT, PS, and PC, you have to choose the smallest between the three, among the three. Okay, you have to choose the smallest value among the three. And then divided by the force or the strength of an original plate which is not reverted at all, but based on one pitch length. So the area would be thickness times pitch only. So that is the strength of the original plate. This is the strength of the original plate. So you don't see FT, FC, and FS here. So you don't see the subscript T or the subscript S or the subscript C here. This is only the symbol F. Okay, so you have P times T. That is the area. Multiply by the stress. That is tensile stress. Okay, so joint efficiency is given by, so you have to pick which one is the smallest among the three, then divided by this value here. Then times 100% to find the joint efficiency. Okay, that's for reverted joint. Okay, that's for reverted joint. Of course, you have for welded joint and so. Okay, so this is for reverted joint. And this is the first part, the first part of reverse of this chapter. You have another parts later on. Okay.